In this video I'm going to look at confidence intervals and how we can use simulation to help understand uh, what the frequentist interpretation of a confidence interval is. Okay, so we're going to do a simulation, so let's open up a new R program. We're going to do 10,000 simulations, so I'm going to define a variable called nsim defining the number of simulations we're going to do, and I'm going to simulate data sets of size n, and for example let's choose a sample size here of size 10. So what we're going to do is repeatedly draw some samples from a population distribution. Now for this example I'm going to draw samples from a normal distribution, so I'm going to define a variable x which draws from the normal distribution size n, I'll arbitrarily pick a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 1. Now I'm going to put this into a for loop to perform our simulation. So for i in 1 to n sim, we're going to repeatedly draw these samples x. And we want to calculate a confidence interval for the population mean, or the true mean of the population from which we're drawing from. So because we're doing a simulation here, we're in control of what this true population mean is. Whereas in a real data analysis situation, we don't simulate the data, we observe or sample the data from the population and we're constructing a confidence interval to indicate the uncertainty about the unknown population mean based on our sample estimate. Okay, so having sampled our um, data x, we're going to calculate a confidence interval for the population mean. Now to do that, I'm not going to go into the calculation of, of that, but I'm going to make use of the t-test function in R. Now we're actually calculating a confidence interval rather than performing a hypothesis test, but the t-test function in R will um, do this for us, calculate the confidence interval. So if we just load those two variables, n sim and n, into memory, now to start with, I'm not going to run the actual for loop, I'm just going to run these two lines here to have a look at the output from one iteration of the code within the for loop. So we get our sample of x values and then we call t-test with x and we get this output from r and you can see here it's got the 95% confidence interval 8.956 up to 10.228. So what we want to do to try and understand what a confidence interval is, is doing um, and how to interpret it is to repeatedly do this sampling, perform the calculate the confidence interval and then store the confidence interval from each of the 10,000 iterations. So what we're going to do is create an array or a matrix which I'm going to call CI array which has 10,000 rows corresponding to the 10,000 simulations and two columns, the first column co corresponding to the lower confidence interval limit and the second column corresponding to the upper confidence interval limit. Now if we actually, there's a handy function in R called str which stands for structure of an R object and it's often useful for finding out how to extract certain things from a, um, an object in R and if we do str of t-test, we can find that the confidence interval is stored in something called dollar confidence interval in a vector of length 2. So this is the lower limit of that confidence interval and that's the upper limit of that confidence interval. So what we're going to want to do is in the ith iteration of our simulation we're going to store in the ith row of confidence interval array the t-test.x confidence interval first element which will give us the lower confidence interval limit and then in the second column the upper confidence interval limit. Now hopefully if we now run this for loop in each iteration we'll sample a new vector of size 10 from a popula normal population distribution with true mean 10 and true standard deviation 1 and use the t-test function to calculate the confidence interval limits, the lower and upper limits of that confidence interval. So if we run this code now, okay so R is finished and if we take a look at the first few rows of this confidence interval array using the head function, 
what we can see here is that the lower limits and the upper limits of the confidence intervals across the 10,000 iterations, 10,000 simulations. So by default, the t-test function in R, as it says here, is giving us a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. So what does a confidence interval, if it has the correct properties, what's it supposed to do? Well, what's it, what it's supposed to do is that the interval, which will change from sample to sample, if it's a 95% confidence interval, then in 95% of repeated simulations or repeated samples from the population, 95% of those in expectation will include the true population mean. So what's the true population mean here? It's 10. So let's check to see whether the confidence interval is doing what it should be doing. So what we need to do is check what proportion of the 10,000 confidence intervals actually include the true population mean value of 10. So to do that, we want the first column to be less than the true value, and we want the second column, the upper limit, to be greater than 10. And then what we're going to do is to find the proportion that satisfy those two things, we're going to do the mean of 1 times that logical expression. So this logical expression will give us a vector of true falses. If we multiply by 1, the trues get turned into 1s and the falses get turned into zeros, and then the mean will give us the proportion of them which are ones, so the proportion of intervals which do include the true population value. And if we run that, we get a proportion of 94.8. So this is pretty close to 95%. It's not going to be exactly 95%, usually, because it's a random experiment, and the construction of the confidence interval says that as the number of simulations goes larger and larger, this proportion of intervals would converge to exactly 95%, but with a finite number of, of simulations, it will be something um, close to 95%. So hopefully this helps to cement the interpretation of what a confidence interval is when you just have a single confidence interval calculated on a single sample. It doesn't mean that the population mean um, belongs to this particular interval with a particular probability. It means that if you were to repeat the experiment or the sampling process many, many, many times and calculate this interval on each of the samples, then 95% of those repeated samples would evaluate to a confidence interval including the true population mean.